Hey everyone, it's David Chen. I usually talk about TV, movies, and technology here, but today I want to talk about The Batman. So what did I think of The Batman? Unfortunately, I think it's a bit of a mess and I didn't like it very much and I wanna talk about why. But before we get into that, just some ground rules. At the time that I'm recording this video, the movie's not out yet, so obviously I'm not gonna be revealing any spoilers. I will be talking about stuff that shows up in the trailer for the movie, so if you wanna go in completely fresh, probably best to just skip this and come back after you've seen the film. All right, let's get into it. I am a huge Matt Reeves fan. I love basically all of his movies. Loved Cloverfield, loved the Apes movies. Uh, I even liked Let Me In, which I think is an amazing horror movie remake that no one has seen. Uh, I think he's a really great filmmaker. I've listened to interviews he's done, and I think he's just so thoughtful about storytelling and about how to bring a fresh perspective to anything he's tackling. So I was really excited when I heard that Matt Reeves was gonna be making a Batman movie. Here's a story we've seen so many different times from so many different angles. We've even seen movies made about villains and side characters in the Batman universe. Uh, I've seen Bruce Wayne's parents get killed so many times. What is it that's going to be special about Matt Reeves' version of the Batman? What new and exciting take is he going to bring to this universe? And the answer, unfortunately for me, is not that much. The Batman is a neo-noir in which Batman is racing against time to solve a series of murders through Gotham, all while uncovering some upsetting truths about the past. Now, let's talk about some of the things I really liked about this film. First of all, the movie looks incredible. At this point, we've seen multiple renditions of Gotham City on the big screen. This version of Gotham is like a combination of New York and Chicago, maybe even some bits of LA sprinkled in there that has this orangish glow at most times of the day. And it's just beautiful to look at. Uh, it's beautifully conceived. And that goes for the visuals overall, I think, in that I think this is one of the most beautiful Batman films I've ever seen. The compositions are so thoughtful and well put together. There's clearly a lot of thought put into visual symbolism and how to use the background and foreground in interesting ways. The sets are meticulously designed and the lighting is just gorgeous. So even though I did find myself frequently bored while watching this two hour and 56 minute long version of Batman, I never got bored of looking at what was on screen because it is just so beautiful. I think the cast of this movie is really solid. Uh, you can totally see these people inhabiting these characters in a way that's quite convincing. Robert Pattinson is decent as Batman, but it's Zoe Kravitz, in my opinion, that really steals the show. She is just so awesome as the new version of Catwoman. She can kick ass, she's vulnerable, she looks amazing. Uh, I think she's a star and I can't wait for this movie to propel her even further into the Hollywood stratosphere. But probably my favorite part of the new Batman is the new design of Batman's whole situation. Like virtually every part of this new Batman feels like it could have been something that was designed and implemented by one billionaire dude and his butler. And that's kind of been my problem with some of the other Batmans, even like Christopher Nolan's Batman, which presumed to show how Batman began, is that uh, at no point was I really convinced that like one dude and his butler could really make all the stuff that you see, the tumbler and the bat cave and all that situation. It just seemed too complicated. And in fact, that was actually a plot line in the movies was there was a guy who was like, hey, how are you requisitioning all this equipment from Wayne Enterprises to do this? Like somebody had to design Christian Bale's version of the Batmobile. And then when they see it on the streets, they would be like, huh, what's up with that? So the idea of a Batman that had all these toys and was still able to remain anonymous never really resonated with me until this movie, because in this movie, the Batcave, the Batmobile, like all the weapons and tools that he's using, this really did feel like stuff that one dude and his butler could have made, could have found, could have foraged and figured out how to implement. And there's something just really compelling about that idea that like, this is a thing that was hacked together by Robert Pattinson's version of Batman. And I really like how it's brought to life in this movie. All right, let's talk about the things I did not enjoy about the Batman. And it broadly falls into two categories. Number one is the tone of the film. It's like somebody watched the Christopher Nolan Batman films and was like, we gotta go darker. We got to go darker. It's not dark enough. The Batman is so dark as to border on self-parody. Uh, it is so dark, it actually becomes 
kind of funny. The Riddler is a combination of the serial killer from Seven, the David Fincher film, as well as the Jigsaw killer from the Saw movies. And if you're thinking to yourself, wow, that sounds pretty dark and off-putting for a franchise that I used to feel comfortable taking my kids to, then you're right. But if that sounds like something that would be interesting to you, you're gonna enjoy this movie. Now, here's something that was running through my head the whole time I was watching this movie is, it felt to me like Robert Pattinson's version of Batman is like Rorschach from Watchmen. Rorschach, you know, the guy who had the mask on and went out and killed people. If you recall, Rorschach himself was supposed to be like what a real life version of Batman was. There's an interview that Alan Moore gave to LeJorn Piddling of Street Law Productions in 2008. It's hard to find the footage online, but I did find the quote from it over at Stephen Sermon's blog. Here's what Alan Moore had to say about Rorschach in 2008. He said, so I thought, all right, if there was a Batman in the real world, he'd probably be a bit mental. He wouldn't have time for a girlfriend, friends, a social life, because he'd just be driven by getting revenge against criminals, dressed up as a bat for some reason. He probably wouldn't be very careful about his personal hygiene. He'd probably smell. He'd probably eat baked beans out of a tin. He probably wouldn't talk to many people. His voice probably would have become weird with misuse. His phraseology would be strange. I wanted to kind of make this like, yeah, this is what Batman would be like in the real world. But I'd forgotten that actually to a lot of comic fans, that smelling, not having a girlfriend, these are actually kind of heroic. So actually, sort of, Rorschach became the most popular character in Watchmen. I meant him to be a bad example, but I have people come up to me in the street saying, I am Rorschach, that's my story. And I'll be thinking, yeah, great, can you just keep away from me and never come anywhere near me again for as long as I live, end quote. That is Alan Moore, the creator of Rorschach, explaining his perspective on Rorschach, who himself is supposed to be a real life version of what Batman would be. And I'm telling you that this version of Batman resembles Rorschach the most out of anyone else I can think of. He has this extremely self-serious narration throughout the movie like, Sunday, April 1st, the city doesn't sleep for me but it does sleep for justice. You know, like, it's just... Uh, we live in a world that is so saturated with versions of Batman, with versions of characters that are kind of send-ups or parodies or extensions of Batman, like Rorschach from Watchmen. I just don't understand what Matt Reeves is trying to accomplish by making this version of Batman ultra, ultra dark. It doesn't feel like it really adds anything to what we understand about Batman. The second thing about this movie that I had a real problem with is the storytelling itself, the way the storytelling occurs. I think it's both confusing and uninteresting. It comes down to a huge amount of stuff that is relevant to the events of the film took place before the film or off screen. So you basically have characters running around and talking about stuff that happened a long time ago and telling like different versions of it. Did this happen? Did that happen? When did it happen? How did it happen? That is the whole film. Now look, I am not necessarily opposed to a really stripped down version of Batman that's just about characters interacting together in rooms and talking about the past. But that's not what this movie is. Like, it wants to kind of have its cake and eat it too. It wants to be this neo-noir that's very contemplative, but it also wants to be kind of a kick-ass action movie. And to be fair, there are a couple of decent action scenes in the movie, and they look really good, as I indicated earlier. But mostly, it's just about characters talking about stuff that you don't see happening on screen. It's talking about stuff that happened in the past. And doing so in a fairly confusing way, I might add, because often the characters in the movie are unreliable narrators, so you don't even know if you can trust what you're hearing. There is one particularly notable scene that I won't reveal actually what happens, but basically a character in the movie receives some very important information and then needs to like register that information and it kind of like upsets the whole balance of the movie. And then literally the next scene, somebody says, hey, all that stuff you were just told was wrong. And it's like, okay, now is that person right or wrong? You know, like, some of the storytelling decisions are just baffling in this movie. And I, I, you'll understand when you see it, or maybe you'll like it, you know, the world is a beautiful tapestry and we all have different opinions on things. So at the end of the day, the Batman is a very pretty version of Batman. But is it interesting? Does it add to my understanding of the character? Is it an engaging watch? Does it justify its three hour runtime? To me, the answer to all these questions is no. Depending on when this video reaches you, you may have already watched the movie. I'm curious what you thought of the movie. Feel free to let me know respectfully in the comments. If you enjoy this video, I try to make a video every one to two weeks about what's going on in the world of TV, film, and technology. Be sure to hit like or subscribe. I also wanna thank all of my patrons at patreon.com slash Dave Chen. I specifically wanna thank all my executive producer patrons. I'm thinking of Jeff Evans, Mark Warner, Sid Yadov, Dan Flanagan, Steve Austin, Ian, Stephen Miller, and Kevin Sow. Thank you so much for making my work possible. Be sure to sign up at patreon.com slash Dave Chen. I put a lot of bonus content on that channel. TV reviews, movie reviews. I even recapped Love is Blind over 
over on Netflix. So check it out at patreon.com slash Dave Chen. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.